left it. What are you doing, Leo? You getting mad? All right, this is gonna be part two to the free Bayliner boat that washed up after a flood with trailer and all strapped to it. It's now known as the trash liner, I'm gonna name it. And in the first video, we recovered it, uh, you know, got it out of there, did a little damage to it or whatnot, but it got it home and then got the engine rotating. And in this one, we now have a starter motor because one of my friends actually saw the video and they were like, hey, I got one of those sitting in a panel van out in my yard. You can grab it and throw it in there, you know, no charge. So <laughs> uh, we're, we're gonna throw that in and see, see what's up with this motor. And I don't know if you saw him hanging out, but garage helper Leo is hanging out and he'll probably come hang out with us and bother us. So let's go grab the Kubota and get this thing pulled out. It's official. Oh my gosh, he just followed me in the garage, creeping on me big time. Probably pooping all over my motorcycle. He likes the 78 KZ1000. Uh, but anyway, so first thing we're gonna do is try out this starter motor before throwing it in. So I've got the ground hooked up on the jump pack. We'll hook the positive up and then jump it. Uh, Leo, you gotta go, buddy. Oof. Oh, that's because that was touching the table. All right, you definitely can't stay there. Here we go. Oh yeah, sounds good. Doesn't sound great. But it works. And of course this old starter just wasn't worth messing with. I mean, it's uh, so, yeah, this is the way to go. Got the bilge a little cleaned up. That way, if this thing does fire and it throws a rod through the pan or something, easier to clean up the oil. Got that starter in. Let's hear this first crank. Does not sound good, but let's throw the plugs in. Too bad. Let's see if we got spark. No spark. I'm gonna crack open a beer and pop this dizzy open. We'll see what that looks like. It looks like a storm is getting ready to roll in too. So get this baby covered up. I wouldn't want her sitting out in the rain. Uh, it's actually not bad in here. Now this does have points though. So we'll have to check if those are working properly. Well, seeing as the point's contacting, looks like a good gap in there. I didn't even check it, but I got no spark. I'm thinking a coil, which I might have a spare one, a two-wire coil in here that would work. I, I save all sorts of coils. That's, that's coil wire there. And then, look, I keep one for pretty much like every vehicle that I've ever messed with. Boom, here we go. This is a, a Toyota coil, two-wire. That should work. I did do a quick test on this coil. If I apply positive, and then I take this lead, put it next to ground. Let's see if I can get your camera angle. And if I tap on this, I should get a spark. If I tap on the ground and I'm not getting, I'm getting a tiny little nothing spark out of this coil. And if I do the same thing on this Toyota coil that's known good, check it out. I got a pretty big gap there and boom. I don't know if you can see, can you see that jumping? Big, jumping a big, big gap. So this coil's weak. And even with the stronger coil, I'm still not getting a spark. So I think I'm gonna try cleaning the points. 
Oh, all right, we got spark. So it was a weak coil and dirty points. I just hooked this factory coil back up. Let's check it. Maybe it never needed the coil to begin with. Oh, look at that. That coil's fine. All right, so that was a waste. I just needed to run a little sandpaper across those points. And for anybody not familiar how, in a nutshell, how this works, ignition coil gets positive 12 volts when you turn the key on and then this side is the negative side so that goes over to the points and uh, when you crank the engine over these little points they momentarily break contact and so when you break the uh, negative from here you're creating an induction of current on the secondary side of the coil this is the primary side and this is the secondary side so when you so when i was hitting it before showing the spark i'm basically doing the same thing as what the the points are doing and then yeah that high voltage spark is sent down this lead into the distributor and distributed to the proper cylinder at the proper time and that condenser is just there as like an electrical damper i guess we'll call it to help reduce the spark in between those points because those will get burned out over time All right, now that she got spark, I just sprayed some start fluid in there. Let's see if it starts up. <laughs> a little backfire at the intake over my hand. Yeah, the fuel coming up through here smells half usable. I'm now going to suck the rest of that milky oil out and fill her up with some freshie. See what's going on inside this carburetor. Instead of an electronic choke, this has got just a tube coming up from the exhaust. So hot gases come up this tube and heat up the spring in there to turn off the choke. It's got a Rochester carb on it. Ooh! Oh yeah, a ton of water. You can see all the water on the bottom of the bowl there. That's why it wasn't running. Here's what the gas look like coming out of the tank. So let's hook it up to auxiliary. None of this is a fire hazard. Luckily I have a fire extinguisher nearby. And that starter I put in there, that's an automotive one. You're really supposed to put marine uh, spark free electric components in these, but we'll be good. It doesn't seem the idle circuit wants to come back to life on this carb, so we'll go check that out inside. Yeah, a little slugey in there. I'll get that cleaned up and throw it back on. Main problem I found was the idle jets clogged solid, and then this uh, fuel screen was pretty slugeed up too. Yeah, so the impeller is good on the water pump, but the screen got hot at some point and spun. These pump kits are like 20 bucks online, but I wanted to see if we could get this thing out today. Take the first spin. I got that recentered where it needs to be. Now let's see if it seats in place. 
like new. I'm gonna rub some Vaseline on this too. So she got lube until water makes it in and uh, it'll be good to go. And now I have to verify that there's water flow through these ports, no blockages. So this one, you see it's coming out on the inlet. So the other side is not. And uh, yeah, look at this, hose actually pops off. Um, this is what goes to the engine cooling system. So now I'm gonna shoot in this one and make sure that's not blocked. So if I put the garden hose in it, I hear water leaking inside, which is not good. And it's pouring out of the back of the engine. So it looks like we have maybe a freeze plug popped out on the back. It's coming out where the starter is too and everything. Motor's got it yanked out. So the drive's got to come off and pull the motor and fix the freeze plug on the back side. It's either rusted out or more than likely somebody didn't drain the water on this and it, it froze and pushed the plug out back there. So uh, yeah, but I guess let's throw the carburetor back on there and see if it at least runs decent now. It all makes sense now too. Remember that rattle noise we heard when we were starting the engine? That's the freeze plug was probably dangling around in the back getting uh, caught up on the flywheel. I'll put the water on so we can test the pump for a good flow and so we don't burn it up too. Even though the water engine's not getting any water. Since it probably froze over, I wonder if this block could have a crack in it causing the water to mix with the oil. I'll have to see if that's a common thing with these 3.0s because then, then the whole thing would be a waste of time. bellows are good in this thing and here's a closer look at that hose I was talking about so you know this should be connected on the back side of here the water flows into this and then through that hose into the engine that should be everything to pull the motor oh, we gotta flip her up a little bit we can pop the bell housing off. Hi. Oh. Hey, Ben. Bad time? <laughs> <laughs> All right, that only took like 10 minutes. Now we can pop the housing off the flywheel and I'll, sh I'll show you that plug. Um, this, these are the only two things that hold the, the engine in, just two knots, one and one on the back motor mounts. And then of course the front one, which we already had off. So uh, yeah, let's, let's get that off. There is the freeze plug that's missing. So we could, I thought about chipping a hole in the housing and just uh, putting one in there, but clearly you wouldn't be able to get it to it anyway. Here's the plug, it's a brass plug. So you see the block did freeze and this got pushed out and it's all chewed up from the teeth of the flywheel hitting it. I could probably reuse this really. Got that plug cleaned up. I did take all the glass off too, and I'll clean that up, throw those pieces on eBay, hopefully recoup some money out of that. For anyone not sure, these are called freeze plugs or also core plugs, and what happened here is, is since the engine was full of water and somebody didn't wet, winterize it, uh, it froze and then, ice water expanded and pushed this freeze plug out 
Uh, so, you know, it could have cracked the block too, and I won't really know. There could be a hairline crack on a cylinder or a water jacket into the oil pan, and I'll, I'll find that out later, basically. Put some silicone insurance on here too. Smear that around. Oh yeah, it's starter. And for anyone wondering, the uh, stern in this boat is actually very solid. Like, I, there's no water or soft spots on the wood right here, which is usually where it would start rotting. And inside, I was hitting on the outside too, but. And if I'm sticking my hand under there. Surprisingly, those motor mount bolts are still good. Nice and tight. I mean, the wood's still good. Was tight coming out but no matter what I do I can't get this u-joint coupler past the rubber uh, gimbal boot housing thing oh man it's tight it was tight coming out and it's like possible to get on seems like it's just swollen <laughs> clearance it a little bit oh man 20 minutes later finally got that in the rubber was extremely swollen, so luckily that's not the part that seals, so the, the bellow is still going to seal good. Alright, today's going to be water test day. It might not look it, but this boat is just about ready to go hit the water. This is the last day I could probably do this because it's dropping into the low 30s tonight. So I want to win winterize this boat and then it's in like the 30s and 40s every day on out. It's still 60 right now, but in the next few hours it's supposed to start raining and get into the 30s. So we got we to gotta get out on the water. We are missing a throttle link here, so I'm going to try to go get one off the dumpster. There we go, that's what I need. <laughs> what are you doing, huh? I almost ran over you, buddy. Come on. <laughs> Is that a little bouncy? What are you doing? You can't come on here. You want some food? I'll go get you for Jeff. I'll go get Jeff for you. It is the weirdest feeling when this dude just starts crawling on your shoulders and head. 
like comes out of nowhere. Ah, oh, this one's not the right size. The ball's much smaller. Oh, here we go. If I just use this one, boom, that'll do it. Oh, oh darn, we got another cooling system leak. Uh, I can't really see, but uh, could be a crack in the block or just the exhaust manifold. I can't even see. I don't know if you guys can see. Darn it. We're gonna just let that roll. I was so, ah, oh, look at that. See, I bent the pulley and I'm chewing a hole through the timing cover now. That's what happens when you just have things. Nothing a little pry bar can't fix. Oh, look at that, yeah, it's actually sliding on the, the rubber shot. Let's see if that still rubs. Now, good to go. And we'll see if she goes in the gear. Yep, nice forward. Here's reverse. Oh yeah, sounds good. Oh, now it's slowed down again. Yeah, I'm not getting good water flow. Yeah, see, now I'm not getting water flow again. I got a blockage in there. That pump must have shifted again. I had silicone in the bottom, so that's not leaking anymore. Not that that really mattered, but... No, it's good. So I must have a blockage somewhere. Something's going on in here. There it goes. Last bit of items. We got a bailing bucket slash fire extinguisher and a life vest. A couple paddles. Got it tied down. All right, the docks aren't in, but these are ideal conditions because we're about an hour short of low tide and the wind is pushing up river too. So we're gonna head down river in case she breaks down, we'll get, we'll be able to get pushed back up. And the water temp's 51 degrees and it's dropped down to 38 degrees uh, outside temperature right now. Big cold front rolled through. So let's uh, see if she's taking on any water and then we'll get moving. She got quite a few good looks going down the road too. Must have been that beautiful tree. Not taking on any water and we got our USGS approved fuel tank that's secured with a vented cap. I did throw a life vest and I'm wearing a wetsuit just to be safe too since it's just about winter now. We'll just leave it to trim up a touch. It's easy to check if you got water flow. Yeah, we're overcharging 16 volts on the alternator so the regulator's fried. With her trimmed up a little bit, what do you say we do a top speed GPS run and then we'll, we'll probably head in.
perfection, kind of. Can't believe I'm only got booting today. Here's a better look at the trailer, but it's uh, it's holding up sturdy still. Plenty good. good first run on the old trash liner. I don't think this girl thought she'd ever see the water again. So, I mean, she seemed to have a good time. Uh, we'll see if bringing it out again or not. Uh, let's see what's leaking under here, and then we gotta drain the water out of the blocks. It's going below freezing tonight. Yep, there it is. Big old crack along the block. That's no big deal though. This is uh, not a pressurized cooling system and you could easily fix this by, well, brazing it or better yet, just right stuff silicone. I've put this on exhaust manifolds and other components on marine engines with great luck. So uh, yeah, that's probably what we'll do if we keep this. But yeah, that block is cracked pretty bad. So that was, uh, <laughs> you know, that was fun. These old iron heads are a cool design. This, these are the intake ports and then the exhaust ports right here. All on one side, all through the same manifold. Neat design, kind of like the, the Cherokee 4.0s are like that too. Surprisingly, the drain's not all crowded up on this. Usually those are packed with rust. Here's another look at that choke mechanism. The tube goes right down the middle of the exhaust port and uh, heats, heats that up. And this is where the water blows into the exhaust uh, for, for cooling, keeping the exhaust cool in this thing. So you got to make sure you drain these manifolds out too because you don't want water sitting in the bottom of there. Otherwise it could freeze and crack. So I don't know if this actually has a drain on the bottom or not. Oh yeah, yeah there it is. You got to make sure to winterize that properly otherwise you'll crack the manifold. Last thing I wanted to do is check the stir and drive for milky oil or water on the bottom. Let's see. Uh, yep, it's got water in it. I really should have checked this before but I was in such a rush to just... Um, get her out on the water so yeah it was running with with all that water in it so it goes to show you these OMC Cobras are pretty tough huh so we'll get that drained out and you can see why it's very important to check this at the end of the season or even during the season but particularly before the winter because if you store this with the water on the bottom like that uh, it, it can and will freeze and crack this whole lower case I suppose I'll uh, drain the rest of it out of there and put some fresh fluid in I almost forgot, we gotta check the oil level to see if any water intrusion. And no, it's right down where it was, just below the full line. Yes, it's milky, because there's still some water in there. So I'll do a change on it, but that means there are no internal cracks allowing water to enter the crankcase, which is great. There could still be internal cracks along the cylinder walls allowing water to enter combustion chambers, but not the crankcase. Otherwise we would have seen the oil level higher. All right, guys, that ought to wrap up part two of the trash liner. Uh, hopefully you had as much fun as I did. Again, if we do that silicone fix or braze the block, we can easily get a few seasons out of this boat, I'm sure, and have some great fun. Uh, if we do a part three, we're going to clean it up some on the interior. You know, I was thinking instead of redoing it, I might just go with like an open concept, kind of just get rid of everything and then see how those stringers actually are. And maybe we'll do some testing on how important stringers are. You know, we'll go around and beat on this a little bit and see if the boat splits in two, bring a big two inch sump pump with us in case it does take on water, whatever, something like that. If you got an idea for part three, uh, definitely drop a comment down below. Hugely appreciate that. And uh, if we can come up with something good, then I, I'm thinking, thinking this boat is gonna need a part three, but it's gonna have to be something cool. You know, we, we gotta, I gotta figure out something awesome on this. Uh, so it, it, tons of potential here. Uh, anyway, super happy with the progress so far. And you know, you know, in the part one, I was like, oh, hopefully get some view on, views on this video and then I'll put a starter. Cause I pretty much had a feeling if I threw a starter in it, it was gonna have a whole bunch of other problems. Um, but I mainly went to see if, you know, you guys were interested in, in seeing me work on it more. Anyway, I'm rambling on and on here. So uh, 
Future video coming on this 65 Fury that I that I got too. This is old Plymouth wagon. Love it. Uh, it's it's gonna be a cool cool uh, fun project. So anyway, thanks for tuning in, guys, and watching this far. If you did, hugely appreciate that. And until next time, this is no nonsense, no how. Uh, over out. You know, Leo is super cute, but he comes in the garage and pees on things. Like he just peed all over my KZ 1000. And well, he don't know no better, but. It's definitely uh, one of the annoying things about him. Let's get some food, buddy. Yeah, I'll get my fortune cookie. Hair bubs. Alright, go off with your fortune cookie.